Hello, it's time to take a closer look at the newest Mac Mini with the M2 chip. Let's explore its design, its specs and its performance in real world tests. Let's find out why this mini machine is making waves in the tech scene. I will be giving you an overview of the specifications and the design of the new Mac Mini. I will also conduct some performance tests and demonstrate how it performs in real-world scenarios using DaVinci Resolve and Adobe Lightroom. Then I will give you my thoughts about who could use this tiny computer. So in terms of design, Apple didn't change a lot. It looks exactly the same as the older Mac Mini with the M1 processor. If we are looking at the base model M2, but on the inside, we now have the M2 processor and we also have Wi-Fi 6E, which allows for faster connectivity. Then we have an upgraded Bluetooth module, which supports Bluetooth 5.3 now. And there are some additional RAM and storage options, which weren't there with the previous version. One thing that changed is the headphone jack, which now supports higher impedance headphones. The new Mac Mini starts at 599 US dollars, um, which is 100 US dollars less than the previous version, which is great. However, um, some other reviews already stated that Mac didn't include two SSDs as um, it did with the M1 version. So the very base model with 256 gigabytes now has less performance than the previous version um, because it only includes one SSD and the previous version included two SSDs, so it doubles its performance. So if you want that additional performance, you will need to upgrade to the 512 gigabyte SSD. However, I think it's great that Mac lowered the initial price for the Mac Mini. So I conducted the usual Geekbench test. It gave a single test score of 1930. The multi-core score was 8792. And then I conducted some real-life tests with Adobe Lightroom. I took 1000 RAW files from my Sony A7 III, which were approximately 25 megabytes per file. And I imported them into Lightroom. I generated the smart previews and the one-on-one -on -one previews. The smart previews were built after 6 minutes 25 seconds. And the one-on-one -on -one previews were built after 15 minutes and 49 seconds. And so I took all these images and applied some presets and then I exported them again as JPEG with 100% resolution. And the export of these thousand images took 14 minutes. I also tested the real-life performance in DaVinci Resolve. So I took some clips and edited a short video with some light effects and um, I exported it as MP4 H.265 with uh, 4K resolution and a 25 FPS timeline. I did a multi-pass encode and with the screen recording on, it took 7 minutes and 13 seconds to export the video. And when I turned the screen recording off, it took only 3 minutes and 34 seconds for the same video clip. And while doing this, there was almost no heat coming from the Mac Mini and also the fans were not audible. So it really performed very well, especially compared to my old Windows PC that I built myself. Um, it was a huge machine with a lot of power drawing, um, so it raised my electricity bill. Um, however, I built it myself and it was a real powerhouse. Um, but the new Mac Mini with the M2 processor is faster, which is astonishing because the, this is such a tiny machine. Yeah, it's almost portable. You could take it with you to the hotels and just plug it into the TV. And in comparison to my self-built desktop PC, it's really a beautiful thing. It's made from this aluminum block and it's really nice design, classic Apple. My self-built Windows desktop was equipped with 64 gigabytes of RAM, an AMD Ryzen 7900X and a one terabyte M2 SSD. In addition, I had a graphics card, the NVIDIA GeForce 970. 
but the Mac Mini is much faster for video and photo editing, which I use most. And during those tasks, it just remains silent. And my old desktop PC was really loud and had its fans on all the time while drawing extremely much electricity. So that's a huge improvement compared to my old desktop PC. The only downside of the Mac is that there are not a lot of games available if you're a gamer. But not having these games means more time for other things, which in the end is also a good thing. So my overall thoughts of this new machine is that it performs really good, especially for its price. So if you are just doing productivity stuff, um, like photo editing, video editing, browsing the web, writing some documents, calculating things, then this is the machine for you. Also, if you're coming from Windows, I would recommend thinking about um, going for a Mac, even if it looks different, because the performance is so good nowadays. Um, and for the price you pay, it's really a lot you get. If you like to play games, you could stick to Windows or you could change to a Mac and buy a console instead. If the games you play are available there as well, this is what I did. So if you like this video, please leave a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I will be posting a lot about technology. I will do product reviews and tests. And I will tell you more about emerging technologies such as blockchain or AI as well. And I will discuss the downsides and benefits of these different technologies. So stay tuned for more.